Hey folks, uh, in this video we're going to be taking the Express app that we built in the last episode and adding authentication to it so that we can tell whether or not a user is logged in or logged out and get some profile information from them. Stick around to the end of the video as well and I'll give you a tip on improving your development processes with a very simple extra NPM model. Let's get started. So for this video we're going to be installing a couple of modules. One of them is the Express Open ID Connect module and this is going to give our Express app OpenID capabilities to be able to talk to any OpenID Connect compliant identity provider such as Auth0. We need to install that one. We're also going to install .env which is a helper to pull environment variables out of a .env file so that we can uh, have those configured in our local development environments unlike in production where you would actually set environment variables with your hosting provider. So this will allow us to create a .env file, pull those bits of information out and use them in our application. So let's go ahead and install those. And we're going to need to make changes to our app. So at some point in here, we need to add some kind of middleware to be able to handle the authentication side of things, checking to see whether a user is not logged in, configuring some extra endpoints for the login logout URLs so that our users have somewhere to actually go to for those, those purposes. Before we get into this though, let's jump over to our Auth0 dashboard. Now I've created a new tenant from scratch called Express Demo Ben Dekrai. And if we jump to Applications, Applications, we'll see that I only have the default generic app that comes out of the box with a new tenant. I'm going to create a new one from scratch though, and I'm going to call this one Express App. And because we've got a front end and a back end, we've got a server behind the scenes, it's a regular web application. So we'll go in and cre create that. So then we get taken to the quick start page and you'll see down here we've got the Node.js Express quick start. Now at this point you get a choice of whether you want to explore the sample app or to integrate it with your existing app. Because we have an existing app, I'm going to choose to integrate now. And the first thing that happens is it gives us an opportunity to do some settings. By default, our application is running on port 3000, so I'm happy to accept these default settings. This then takes us to the step-by-step -step process of integration. We've installed the OpenID Connect module already. So let's jump down and have a look at the code. This is basically all the code we need to implement to get Auth0 integrated with our Express app. So I'm going to copy these piece by piece in, uh, so we can put them in the right place in our file, in our existing file. So we need to import the OpenID Connect module. So up here, I'll paste that in at the top there, keep all the imports together, all the requires. And then we've got a config that tells us more about how we're going to connect to the OpenID provider. We'll come back to this in a second. Then we've got the middleware application, as in the application of the middleware code. We're going to apply through app.use the auth that's got pulled in from OpenID Connect. We're passing in this config up here. I mentioned that I wanted to put some things into environment variables. So let's create a new file here called .env. Anything that gets defined in here can get pulled into our application through the .env module. So we'll require .env. And if we just call config, config on here. Now all of the variables that we're about to define in the .env file will become available to us under the process.env object. So let's copy these parts here out, which are the ones that I would like to extract into a separate file. This now means that when we deploy into production or a staging environment, they can be defined environment variables separately rather than being embedded in the code. It makes it easier for us to manage multiple environments in the future. So I'm going to make these uh, all capitals, which is a uh, a standard for environment variable names. And this one I'll just call issuer. Now this secret at the top here can be any randomly generated long string. I've got a plugin called VS Code Random, which allows me to generate random strings like letters and digits. And I'm going to create a hundred digit and character long string. Um, so I'm, I'm happy with that one. There are various different ways that you can generate these. And in fact, if we look back at the Auth0 documentation here, there's even a suggestion down at the bottom of another way that you can generate this string. Okay, now that we've defined these environment variables, we need to pull them into our app. So in here, rather than having the actual values, we're going to call process.env, and then we just add in the name of the environment variable on the end. I'm gonna copy this just to help me finish the rest of these off. Great, so that's all the configurations required to be done. If we look back at the sample code in the quick start, 
You'll see this one last bit of code down here, which is basically defining a handler for the root URL. So a request to the root URL would return the string logged in or logged out based on the value of, of is authenticated, which is available in this new object called OIDC, OpenID Connect, on the request parameter that gets passed into the, the handler. Now we've got uh, EJS configured already and we've got a, an index router. So let's jump into this routes file here and have a look at what we can do with this request OIDC. So if we look at request.oidc, we'll see a couple of properties that we can get access to. We've got the ID token, the identity token of the person who's logged in, some claims that could be added in, whether or not they are authenticated. We've got also a user object here, which tells us more about the user. Let's have a look at is authenticated first of all, though. And rather than outputting it anywhere, I'm just going to console log this so we can see what's going on. Uh, if I hit save and we come down here and we restart our NPM app, Okay, now if we refresh the application over here, we can see that it comes through with false, which is this response here. So is authenticated is false. The OIDC connect module will give us access to two new routes, login and log out. Now I could just call this directly by typing it in, but let's work, work through this process and we'll update the view to add a navigation menu at the top. Okay, so we've got a login and a logout call now. If I refresh the application over here, we can see the login button. If I click on login, that's gonna take us to the login page. Because I create a new tenant, I'm gonna to need to create a new account. If you're working off a tenant that already has users, you can log in as one of those. So I'm gonna to go to sign up and I'm gonna create a new account over here. And now we can see down here that we're getting a true through. So I'm now logged in. But we've still got login and logout. Let's put some logic around here so we only show the relevant one. In our route, we're going to take the value of this is authenticated and we're going to pass that through into the template. So we'll add is authenticated and the value of is authenticated. Hit save and I'll reformat it slightly. So we're still passing the title through and now also the value of is authenticated. Now in here, we can put in a conditional. So if we're not authenticated, then we want to output the login button. Otherwise, we want to output the logout button. And then let's close that block off. Hit save, refresh over here. Now we're getting an error because is authenticated is not defined. The reason for this is that we have updated our JavaScript over here, but node needs to be restarted for this change to take effect. Now, I did mention at the beginning of this video that there's a tip towards the end. If you stick around to the end of the video, I'll give you a tip on how to make this part of development a little easier. But for now, I'm just gonna come in and just restart NPM. And there's a little message coming up here to warn you about issues around form post. Basically, what this boils down to is that in environments where you're connecting an HTTP, an unsecured website, to the authentication provider, there could be some issues based on various cookie settings in some of the newer browsers. This will not be an issue for you when you're running it in production because in production you should be running your application on HTTPS. If you're having issues getting this working in development and for the purposes of following along with this demo, you shouldn't. But if you do, I'll leave a link in the description below which will take you to a page that explains how to get your local development environment running over HTTPS as well and that'll then solve this issue for you. So with Node restarted, I should be able to refresh the page over here and now we get just the logout button and confirmation down here that login is true. If I click the logout button, then we get a message saying that I'm no longer logged in and the login button appears instead. Let's log in again. And now what I want to do is pass the user object in. We noticed before that on request.oidc there was a user object. Let's pass that into our view so that we can generate some information about our profile. So we'll pass in user as being request.oidc.user, save that. We'll come in over here and let's for now just output the values that are in that object so that we can see what's going on. So we'll do a JSON stringify of the user, put in some formatting to make it look a bit easier to read. 
And if we hit refresh over here, again, we get that error. We need to restart node. Refreshing again, we now get the information through. This is basically the payload of the identity token that's come back from Auth0 when we logged in. So we get the nickname, my name, a photo associated with me, when my profile was last updated, email, whether or not the email was verified. So when I created an account, I would have had an email asking me to confirm that I was actually the owner of that email account. If I click on that link, the value of this will change to true. And the subject. So when it comes to creating your own database for the data that your application needs, rather than having a username and password in the user field, you'll have a subject field. And this value that comes through is forever associated with the account that I just created in this tenant. Let's do something slightly prettier than this. And I've got some code over here to make this a little easier. Rather than outputting the JSON, let's put some HTML in here. And basically what this is doing is if the user is defined, then we're going to output this div. And inside there we have an image, which is loading the image from user.picture. That's this URL over here. And then we're also outputting the name. We're going to take the nickname. And basically what this code here is doing is it's taking the first character of the nickname and converting it to uppercase and then outputting the rest of the username. Basically, I'm just capitalizing the first letter of the name to make it look a little bit prettier. So if I hit save on this and we hit refresh over here, we now get my photo and my name. Now, it's not very pretty. So because we like to make things a little pretty, let's update the style sheet. I've actually got an entirely new style sheet here. We'll just run through this. I wanted to pull in a slightly nicer font than the standard sans serif on my system. So I'm using Montserrat. I quite like that as a font. Pick whichever one you like. And then we've got some formatting here for the profile info that we just added. So I'm basically going to constrain, constrain it to a 200 pixel width, center it, add a border around it, a bit of a shadow. I'm going to make sure that the image is no wider than its container. And then the name, I'm going to make it a little bit larger and center it. So if I hit save on this now and refresh, we get a nice little Polaroid looking photo here of me with my name underneath. Now, bonus tip. I did mention down here a couple of times we had to restart node. Let's just make sure that in future development, we don't need to do that anymore. Anytime we change any of our source JavaScript files, we want Node to automatically restart. So I'm going to install a dev dependency because we only need this when we're in development mode. It doesn't need to be installed in production. It's called Nodemon. And basically what this will do is monitor the files and restart Node when we need it to. And it's quite simple to uh, update this. In the first episode, we already set up this start script here. Rather than calling Node, we're going to call Nodemon. And now when we restart NPM, you will see here a bit of extra information coming through about Nodemon. We're starting, we're watching files. Now, if I make a change to any of these files here, we'll see that Node gets restarted automatically. Really simple change, but it makes my life a little easier, so I don't have to remember to keep restarting Node.js. So that's all I have for this episode. In the next one, we're going to be looking more at authorizing users for particular endpoints. So at the moment, we're just pulling out information if the user's logged in on the homepage. We're going to create some endpoints, some new routes that will only be accessible if you're logged in. Come back for that one. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and you've got hit that bell notification so you find out when that one is released. And don't forget to like this video as well. It does help the YouTube algorithms and make sure that other people can find it too. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. And until then, happy coding.